and leave a third. RJ was uh, perfectly healthy, uh, um, I guess normal child, until he was 11 months old. On July 12, 1995, RJ had a fever of 104. He was diagnosed at that time with meningitis. Before he left the hospital, they did what they called an auditory brain response test, and RJ's responses weren't that good. When we left the hospital and came home, I was sure that RJ was going to be among the miraculous group, um, which regains their hearing. I was emotionally paralyzed, and I didn't want to accept it, but it was um, the only way I could cope with what had happened to RJ. They took him in and to see uh, the House Institute people. It was clear that his left ear had just about no hearing. His right ear had some residual hearing left, but when uh, the diagnosis came, it was a, like a real, like not only did I hit a brick wall, but the brick wall fell on me also. Wondering, how will we get through this? How will we deal with this? Will our son be ostracized? He has enough residual hearing where with hearing aids, he could possibly hear speech. After about a couple of months of struggling with the hearing aids, he finally got used to it and objects strenuously when we want to take him off because he knows that they help him. I wanted to give our son as much of a chance for him to later on figure out what he wants to do. And we had to debate that issue and we resolved it to deal with the oral program and the John Twitchy Clinic was it's close to us. It's world renowned, so we thought that was the place to go. Put your finger on, put your finger on, put your finger on your nose. Turn it around. Pop, pop. We learned that um, a simple activity such as blowing bubbles is very helpful for your child because it's an opportunity to work on B's for bubbles, P's for pop, pop, pop. It really helped RJ. And also, he can sing with us, which is really wonderful. Old MacDonald had a farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on this farm he had a airplane. Okay. The progress he's made, it's just such a dream. I'm, I'm so happy, and I really don't think of him as a deaf child now. RJ will be able to do whatever he wants, and that is just a wonderful feeling to have as a parent. <laughs>
I call her my miracle in progress. That's exactly what she is. I love you. I love you. I noticed that there was a problem early on when um, Rachel was not responding to the sound of her rattle. No response. And that was a horrible moment. So we found out that day um, that Rachel had a profound hearing, hearing loss. And then it occurred to me, I'll never be able to talk to my daughter. It will be a whole nother world, um, another way of a mode of communicating. And we needed some kind of place to go to. So we found out and we heard about John Tracy Clinic. We met with John Tracy's uh, staff. They were extremely helpful. In fact, they, at that point, um, gave us loaner hearing aids. She was about seven months old. About three years of age, she evoked one of our first words. Okay. We took her out of John Tracy Clinic and put her in Echo Horizon. They had a pre-K program there at the time. And at that point, we had her fit with the transonic, which transposes a high frequency to a low frequency. It worked well, and it moved her to the next level. Good job. But then she began to plateau off again. Well, at this point with Rachel, we had to make a decision. She clearly was not going to make it in second grade in the oral vision. The implant seemed to be uh, uh, something to go for. So at the day of the surgery, she was very brave. And then uh, 25 days later, we were at house and they started doing the mapping. It was pretty remarkable because she could be 25 feet away and I'd go, Rachel, and she'd turn around. Now that she's a cochlear implant user, um, and she's doing quite well at it. How much is that? Two cups. Two cups. We are really, really pushing on language expansion, building the sentences. Where does the cheetah live? So we do a lot of artwork. Africa. Af what's that? Africa. And we converse about what's going on in, uh, in the picture. Alona Shemza is one of her really good hearing impaired and friends. They like playing cards. Do you have angelfish? And go, go, go fish. Ready? Go! The implant itself has made her seem a little bit more independent. You're showing off. You're a show off. Mm -hmm. I love you, Daddy. I love you. Matthew was born May 7th, 1988. He was born with a cleft palate and a soft palate. We went to see the cleft palate team, which informed us that he might have hearing problems. At 14 months, his cleft was repaired, and then at three years, he started in with speech therapy. And each time he was tested, hearing was not an issue for him. Matthew turned five in May, and at that September, he was going to begin kindergarten. The audiologist said, Matthew has a hearing loss. At that point, we, be okay, we began a very there. long journey into hearing aids. From kindergarten to second grade, he continued to lose his hearing to the point that he became severe to profound in both ears. His speech started to deteriorate even more. We started looking into the cochlear implant. We underwent the evaluation at the care center. And in July of 97, he had the operation. That first day after we turned him on and he hated it, I was just so afraid. What did we do? What have we made a mistake? But within a couple of days, he, he started responding and he started seeing what a difference it makes. This year, he started fourth grade. And he goes, Mom, I heard everything my teacher said. That blew me away because last year, I don't think he heard much at all. I can hear birds, dogs barking, the radio in the car, the beeper, my watch beeping. He loves Nintendo. Oh, shoot. Marcus! How do you slow down? Oh, you press this. Matthew has a best friend. His name is Spencer. Yeah, press this to go faster and this to slow. He's been playing piano for two years now. With the implant, he's hearing more the subtleties in the music. It's only been six months since he's been hooked up and, and using it. Hi Spencer, I was planning to let him come over and play tomorrow. I now look at him and I see a happy, 
self-assured, caring child. Mm, okay. Matthew, we're so proud of you. We love you very much. Thank you.